Oh my God. <laughs> All the way back? I think so. Okay. <laughs> going in might be easier than That's going it. out. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> the seat needs to go back further. I don't Hello. think so. Oh my god, Superman is here. Oh, <laughs> or Iron Man? Who are you? Iron Man. Iron Man. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Well, if the seat doesn't go back further, I can't get in. I guess a GT6 has crossed off my list then. Hey guys, welcome to the GT6 uh, series of the Rusty Beauties shop. We are finally starting work on this beauty. As you know, she came a few weeks ago and she needs a lot of love i should say i really don't know where to start from and i was just uh, discussing here with david who is right here and uh, we think that we should start with the bonnet maybe strip the lights and everything remove the bumper and take out the bonnet and start just removing fiberglass because, because as i showed you before you know there is more fiberglass on this bonnet than metal so here all this is fiberglass you can see how it's peeling down there it's even held by fiberglass the whole wheel arch is like i'm really afraid to look inside to see what's in there but luckily it's only here on the wheel arches and the other side was a little bit better a little bit better i think like at least there's not so much fiberglass inside so maybe maybe we only need to replace the wheel arches maybe we can get two fenders but not use the entire fenders only use the the wheel arches so are you saying it's not a rusty beauty it's a fiberglass beauty yeah <laughs> fiberglass fantastic, doesn't rust fantastic fiberglass <laughs> yeah so yeah i think that's where we should start because since david is here he can give me a hand to pull the bonnet off and we're gonna go from there i guess it's hard to start so you can make a plan but once you start you always know what your next steps are gonna be then uh, there's going to be a lot of work on the actual body, but I'm afraid that I'm going to have to figure out the wiring first before I start every taking everything apart because the wiring has been really modified here and I have to understand how it works before I start taking it apart so I can put it back together. Actually, I'm going to talk to the owner and we'll see if he wants to keep it the way it is or maybe we can bring it back to stock because i don't know why it is like this because the voltage regulator has been disconnected obviously and all the connections have been done to accommodate a alternator and probably that's why the wiring has been modified that much but i see here they have a relay which is disconnected but also as I can see here, the blue and the yellow wires are the switched part of the relay and the yellow one was going nowhere. It was disconnected and I can't even tell where it was going. So obviously this, re this relay is useless. But again, I have to go through all that before I take anything apart because I don't know how I'm going to have to put it back together in this same shape or I'm going to bring it back to stock and do the modifications for alternator a little bit in a better way. Look at that. The good thing is that whoever repaired this car didn't know how to weld. So all the repairs are done with fiberglass and we just have to peel it. <laughs> yeah. I like this modification. You have to come over here though. This is like the best triumph modification I've ever seen. So this little, so this little fitting off the valve cover goes into yeah. a tube. <laughs> 
So you get any oil vapor or anything, <laughs> and that actually goes through into the frame. <laughs> so it actually oils the frame internally, that's so you don't get any rust. Yeah, that's, that... that's a fantastic idea. Yes, yeah, self-feeding yeah. oiler. I think I might retrofit my cars. <laughs> good idea. That's a good idea, yeah. yeah? <laughs> actually, David has a good idea. Instead of stripping the lights and everything first, we can just uh, remove these two bolts from the hinges and disconnect the wires from inside and disconnect the wires from over there and uh, then we can just remove the whole bonnet and strip everything else. Yeah, we have to remove the struts and everything. I was thinking that it's better if I keep it on the car for alignment, but if I have to put it back on, I'll put it back on later. Get in here. Let's do a little shake test. Ready? Ooh. Come on! Really? It's snowing rust. I, Maybe I, it is a rusty beauty after all. <laughs> I thought fiberglass oh. doesn't rust. Oh. Okay. Any money? Any no, no, change? No, no change. Okay, we're gonna start peeling this off and see what the real condition of this thing is. All right, here goes nothing. You spent all that effort on making it, and you want to give it away. You want to give it away. <laughs> Some special fabricating. But that was an angle, and got straightened, and then bent into this shape. So if you have that skill, you should be. You can get another little strap on there too. Yeah. So is that all fiberglass? I don't know. <laughs> Oh, now you did it. Now you did it. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Happy. Oh, oh, oh. This is actually a whole fiberglass piece. Oh, wow. Well, on the plus side, you can get to the wiring a little easier now. Yeah. <laughs> actually, I'm happy it's repaired this way because now yeah. I don't need to spend two hours removing the, the patch. So it goes into the inner side. Is that showing there? Yeah. Believe it or not, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. I think it's not that bad. Like. This piece to be made, it's not that hard. This we can just cut and extend. Let's see. So oddly enough, the other side is actually pretty good shape. Yeah. So you got a good side for template. Yeah. I've done that on my speed fire. I've done that on my speed fire. And I didn't have any experience of that type. And Unfortunately, we lost Jed Matley's videos for, I don't know what happened to him, I hope he's okay. But he had a beautiful video about preparing this on his uh, GT6. This, this whole thing needs to come off, we're gonna rebuild the corner, and it's gonna be fine, I'm sure. So here's this side, you were saying this one looks pretty solid actually. No fiberglass on this side, so got a good template to make the repair, actually though. Even the wheel well looks much better on this side, so kind of funny how that happens.
totally grown. It's going to be a pretty good pile down there. I love these original uh, lights. I was saying to Ellen, these little beehive lights, glass, it's similar to the uh, TR3. These are in pretty good shape, actually. Oh. More fiberglass. Fiberglass and Bondo. <laughs> the dream team. <sighs> Yeah, I would say that this piece here is somewhere around here. This whole lower piece. It's gonna come off? Yeah. See where the Bondo is here? Coming through? Yeah. So it looks like it might be pop riveted here? Yeah. I think it's just a patch. I don't think it's... No, it's not attached. There you go. Pop rivet. That's what I thought. <laughs> so I was right. So, <laughs> so that keeps going up. So everything below this? Yeah. Is yep. yep. How did they make it? The shape. Wow. They're artists, sculptors. Yeah. I've had a lot of fiberglass in some of my cars, but not necessarily on the body tub, and more on the floors. <laughs> Well, that's a new one all right so we did what we did by hand here i think from here we have to actually start stripping it with a wire wheel at least we got rid of the fiberglass i'll see if there's more fiberglass on the other side like here no this is not fiberglass i think but if there is we're going to remove it manually and then the rest we can just wire wheel away and for that we have a I have a big shop that uh, works well for fiberglass stripping. It's called outside. So we're gonna just put it outside and wire wheel the bondo out of it. <laughs> but for that, we're gonna I'm gonna strip it off all lights now. The grill, which grill I think is gonna need to be replaced anyways because it's broken here. It's so riveted. I don't know when we strip it when we take it off we're gonna see, see if we can use it again or not but yeah let me take all the lights the latches the trim on the outside mirrors and stuff and then we're gonna take it outside and make a lot of dust okay it looks like fiberglass <laughs> is in, in there as well yeah, yeah. More of it, so yeah. that's the, the left side <laughs> yeah. as well. So we thought that this side was gonna be in better shape, but it's also something is happening there. <laughs> yeah. Anyways, it's not unexpected. So yeah, we are almost done here. We just need to remove the grill. Let's uh, remove the trim. So David removed all the Triumph letters. Triumph foo, he actually spelled. Yeah, I don't know how to spell Triumph. <laughs> I put them in a bag, but he spelled Triumph foo or Triumph moo or something like that. So the grill needs to come out now, but it is... Uh, all the screws are stripped, so it's going to be a pain. Lots Here it's riveted, rivets. and these rivets are even not pop rivets, so I don't even know how we're going to drill those. We're going to have to drill a small hole in the middle first. Yeah, that's going to take a while now. Anyways, that's where we are. 
just a quick update. All right, we have it pretty well stripped of parts, like everything is off it except the grill. And the grill is giving me troubles here. These like really don't want to come out. I'm going to keep them there for now. I soaked them with uh, WD-40 underneath. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to cut the bolts and the, ca the cage nuts because there are cage nuts here. I'm pretty sure I'm going to have to cut those, but for now I'm going to leave them. And I'm going to use the little pause of raining because it keeps raining on and off all the time. Right now it's not, so I'm going to go out and do some wire brushing. But if it starts raining, we're going to come back in because, because I don't want it to get rusted, you know. Okay, so I'm not gonna go too much here in this area because as we were discussing with David, probably this whole fender needs to be replaced or at least, I don't know, maybe like I was thinking maybe just the wheel arch, this part is missing, so yeah. This is a separate panel, so this panel we can repair. There are little holes here and there, but this can be repaired. This flange can be repaired here, but a fender is, of course, from this flange coming around here, and there's a joint here, somehow. I'm not really sure how it comes. And, uh, and then from here down. So I think this is what's gonna happen. This whole fender is gonna be replaced. I believe the triangle piece here is available also. You can buy it. That's fine. The inner fenders I can repair. I don't think we need new inner fenders. Here we can just extend and bring them to the correct length from here. Uh, I'm gonna have to clean this side as well and see if this fender is in a little bit better shape, which I believe it is. So maybe this fender will survive. But again, there's a fiberglass patch inside which means that there's something going on here so we're gonna be able to tell once it's stripped uh, but I believe this side is in a much better shape than the other side maybe we can just patch here and forget about it because this is in a good shape and that's good because this is gonna be our reference for repairing that part hopefully this piece is also available to buy because otherwise we're gonna have to repair this it's not much longer than what this is here so if we have to we're gonna have to repair it the only thing is here this hole but we might just yeah we might make it anyways it started to rain again so I'm gonna bring it back in and we're gonna continue some other time all right so our first bin of parts is started and we have all the everything that we disassembled from the bonnet including all the hardware and clips badges everything i'm gonna try and keep all parts grouped somehow like this is all the bonnet parts and there she is without a bonnet that's weird well anyways i was just looking at the wiring here again and it is like really i don't understand what's going on uh like there's ground run di directly to the distributor because i don't know i don't see anywhere ground strap to the engine but this means if there's no imagine if there's no ground strap to the engine and you run this ground to the distributor now all of the sudden even the alternator is charging through this cable that's the negative of the alternator as well imagine if there's no ground strap so that's really dangerous because this all of the sudden can overheat. Uh, so I'm really hoping that this is not the case anyways. Um, I'm still trying to figure out what this relay does or was doing 
and the only way to tell that is by finding what triggers it so here the white wire is what goes inside the body and on the white wire there are three wires attached we have a two black and one red for whatever reason i'm not sure if that's just doubled up or tripled up wire leading to the same switch which wouldn't make sense because it doesn't need to be such a big wire for just to trigger the relay but yeah whatever this relay was powering was connected to the yellow wire because the blue one comes from the red one <laughs> which comes from the starter solenoid the other red one on the starter solenoid is this red one going directly to the alternator so yeah so that was the power side on the switch of the relay that was whatever it was powering but it's not there anymore so obviously we don't need it then another thing here this red wire is going inside the body i wonder what it is powering and again that's not fused so i don't know i hope this is going to the fuse box which should be somewhere inside there but why i don't know because oh maybe because this green this brown was cut i don't know i have the feeling that i'm just gonna rip off everything that was external and whenever this car is coming together i'm just gonna try to be with to bring it back to the stock wiring except of the voltage regulator of course that is not needed anymore with an alternator i didn't know that even gt6s were coming with a generator but probably in 68 yeah well that brings me to the uh, to the ear i've never found out what ear that is i need to clean this up and see okay i took it off the car it's easier to clean it and i'm using some gun wash solvent i think and i managed to clean it up as much as i could but unfortunately we still don't have the ear information here uh, nothing here so we have the commission number but according to the commission number it's uh, whatever this little fella here mark can one. find on the internet it's a mark one. he can only find that it's mark one and it's produced between 66 and 68 because mark one was produced at that time so anyways it doesn't really matter uh, i'm i'm sure some of someone has more information and can give me a little help here anyways it was interesting for me to find out by the commission number when it was produced but anyways that's all the information we have for now so we're gonna bag this because we want to put it back in we'll try to clean it a little bit better without damaging it more than what it is damaged already like and uh, yeah these are available you can buy them and just punch your own numbers but i think this is interesting to put back on the original one Anyways, that's it for now.